Ça. Da. What's up, though? I'm glistening. Can you see it? It's a little toasty in here. Hold on now. Tokyo, Thailand. Oh, wow. I was... Two young brothers enter a local internet cafe, take their seats, and begin playing their favorite games. One boy was 13, and the other just eight. And together, they sat there and played the way they always did, getting lost in their screens, wasting the day away, until one of the boys felt a tap on his shoulder. Standing there beside them was a similarly aged child, a stranger to the boys, but a friendly one who strikes up a conversation and eventually poses an offer. According to the unnamed child, he had a friend who lived close by that owned a special computer, one far better than the device they were currently using and one that had any game you could ever dream of playing. And he was headed to that friend's home right now, but he didn't want to go alone. It was an offer that the boys just couldn't refuse, and considering the child was clearly around their age, they saw no red flags and agreed to go- I don't give a clutch, this random ass kid. Hell no. <laughs> what? Him, following the boy to a nearby apartment building, then up seven flights of stairs and into a dark room. But waiting for them inside that room wasn't some sort of supercharged computer, and it surely wasn't a friend of the boy. I'm saying! Instead, it was a monster in every sense of the word. A depraved soul who, years down the line, would go on to become one of the most notorious predators ever to walk this earth. An entity known only at the time as Mr. Swirl. And these children had just fallen into his trap. Oh, shit! I hope he not taking these kids and doing oh no. Mr. Swirl, hell. I hope we're not doing nothing to these Hey guys, I just wanted to announce that I am currently working on two collaborative projects with my good friend Nexpo, aka Ryan. Together we made this channel called Nick and Ryan, where we travel to some of the most haunted locations in the United States to try and see if we can go from being skeptics to believers. Which we're already three episodes in and things have gone completely off the rails, but I can honestly say it's some of the most fun I've ever had creating. So hopefully it'll be just as fun for you guys as well, and a nice break from this disturbing content over here. And also we've been working on an ARG slash clothing line called Liminal Land, which has been an amazing passion project for the both of us, and we're already cultivating such a unique and creative family base over there which has been super cool and super inspiring so i'll leave a link below both to liminalland.net as well as the new nick and ryan channel i would love it if you went and gave both of them a try but if not absolutely no worries because this channel is not going anywhere okay back to the disturbing video it's unclear if they knew what they were looking for or if they had just happened upon it by pure chance but in 2004 german police entered a long forgotten storage unit where beneath the piles of junk and old appliances they'd unearth a single hard drive once plugged into the computer the device revealed hundreds of images some showing various locations breathtaking scenery delicious meals and cp delicious meals Delicious meals. That shit does not look delicious. Are you just saying that? You must be just. That don't look. That look nasty. <laughs> I'm sorry. It don't. I don't see no flavors. I don't see no seasonings. I don't see no juices. Like ain't nothing going on. Oh no, that look nasty. <laughs> I knew, um, he, he, he said it right when I paused it, but CP, if you don't know what that is, I'm not going to say it, just look it up, but please, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot to handle, 
It's not. Just brace yourself. Please, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm not even going to say what it stands for. But I had to look it up. So I can know, you know, what I'm reacting to. But like, holy shit. Alright, so we on this. Mr. Swirl. Mr. Swirl is on this child shit. Okay. That's nasty, man. Come on now. CP. The images showed scenes of depraved dual abuse being done to individuals who were clearly minors, with this abuse being far worse than you'd ever imagine. And it wasn't just one child either, as across that hard drive seemed to be evidence of multiple separate instances of abuse, including images of three young boys taken in a dark apartment building. The discovery was horrid, though sadly all in a day's work for investigators who encountered things of this nature on a daily basis. And it's a discovery that likely would have never been discussed by the media after that one day, had it not been for one unusual detail. Typically, in cases involving CP, those taking the photographs and performing the actual abuse will almost always go out of their way to ensure that they aren't shown on camera. That way, if authorities should stumble upon it, they would essentially be unidentifiable. However, the dozens of photos found on this particular hard drive were different. Because rather than hiding just out of frame like all the other predators seemed to do, the man behind these images had instead gone out of his way to ensure he was featured within them, shamelessly inserting himself into every single picture, even posing for them before, during, and after he had changed the lives of these kids forever. And although his entire body was shown in these photographs, the only thing hiding his identity was the addition of a single effect, one that swirled the man's face into a distorted, pixelated mess, making him completely unrecognizable, and leaving his face to look like this. That's it. I'm locking up everybody that's white on site. <laughs> That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy as hell. Everybody that's white getting locked up on site. No if and is but that's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I hope they identify him. Probably not. Because how do you even... Who is... Like, I wonder if Netflix did a thing on this. Probably not. I don't know. Because CP is a very, very sensitive topic. He looked... All that chest hair. Jesus, man. There was something so disturbingly arrogant about it. A man posing with his victims while destroying their lives, hiding behind only a single swirl of color, almost as if he was taunting any investigators who might eventually find these images. And given the clear indications that this man was obviously a serial abuser, and likely still out there offending, tracking this anonymous figure down became priority one for law enforcement in the area. And it's there that he would be given his nickname, Mr. Swirl. And with the swirl being the only thing standing in the way of investigators getting to see his face, most would have assumed that identifying him would be a walk in the park. However, this was far from the case. As the images began to be dissected, it quickly became apparent that deciphering the sensor was going to be far more difficult than initially thought, and potentially even impossible, as the pixels had been scrambled in such a unique way that there wasn't any known method to unscramble it. And quickly, what should have been their most valuable clue, the one that stood so tantalizingly close, became a lost cause, leaving investigators at their first dead end. Realizing that things were about to get much more difficult, the German police enlisted the help of an agency known as Interpol, an international crime-stopping organization with a special unit dedicated to resolving crimes against children. Interpol immediately began to get to work, attempting to decipher the photos in a different way, this time by using context clues in the pictures to track down where exactly they were taken, which in turn could tell them where this man was from and where the abuse was taking place. But this too unearthed yet another problem. The first batch of images was discovered to have come from Cambodia, but the next showed evidence that the man was in Vietnam and then in Thailand God and damn. even South Korea as well. Rather than gaining clarity, the locations of these images instead made the search even wider, as the man was seemingly traveling from country to country, committing his crimes, and then fleeing, thus never staying long enough for law enforcement to catch up with him, making it completely unclear to investigators where he was actually from. And given just how vast his travels were, 
At this point, it was realized that Mr. Swirl could Man, be- Man, I felt bad for his family or his parents if it, they're, if he's if his parents are still alive. Because it's like, Man, how do you, to, 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 to be the same blood, to have the same blood as somebody as bad as him, as Mr. Swirl, or some of these crazy ass, bad, awful, truly awful people on this planet, to have the same blood as them makes me want to just like, like, if I ended up finding out, like, one of my family members, like, one of my blood family members did something like, like, like him, like Mr. Swirl, or just, just like, just off the wall shit, I, I got half a mind to take all the blood out of my body and just put in some new blood, because <laughs> I, I don't want to be, I don't want to have nothing to do with you at all, at all, at all, like. Can you imagine how R. Kelly's kids must have found, like, must have felt when they found out? Ah, oh, oh, oh man, oh my god! Anywhere, a moving target, so to speak, and an active one as well. During the investigation, which would later be dubbed Operation Vico, in reference to Vietnam and Cambodia, which seemed to be the main sites of his abuse, investigators made a disturbing discovery. And Mr. Swirl's photographs were not exclusive to just that hard drive, as photo after photo began to appear on various online forums, with all of them featuring that disturbed, swirling face. The images were shared across the web seemingly straight from a man himself, and were sent out to various predatory groups that were filled with individuals just as sick as he was. Within these groups, it was considered a badge of honor to show your body and face within the content you made, thus leading to the sender becoming well-respected among his peers, which showed us two things. One, that this was likely the reason why Mr. Swirl inserted himself in these photos, as it had led to him becoming a beloved member of their twisted community, in turn granting him access to all the CP he could want. And two, that the images found on the hard drive did not account for his whole body of work, as in these chat rooms and forums, police would find far more photos featuring their suspect, raising the total from a few dozen to nearly 300. By this point, Mr. Swirl had been untraceable. Authorities were essentially searching for a ghost, and though these new images must have felt like a gut punch at first, they would eventually prove- as, 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 as many pictures of him with a swirl on his face, as many of those pictures are online, it's almost as if he wants people to find him, to, to find who he is. But it's like, it's almost impossible, damn near impossible, to, to identify him. But I feel like, How do you, I don't, I don't even know how you would go about, I didn't, like, I don't, where do you even start from? <laughs> oh, man. To be integral to their investigation, as for the first time in their hunt, Mr. Swirl had made a key error. Within these postings, Mr. Swirl had forgotten to hide his IP address, in turn revealing the general area in which they had been sent, with the location being Vancouver, Canada. This break revealed the key detail that he had some sort of tie to Vancouver and that he was likely Van a sex tourist. Van Canada, all right, that's it. Have Canada shut down. Nobody leaving, nobody coming in. I don't give a damn who they is. I don't care what it is. Shut it down. Just like that Simpsons movie. If you gotta put a dome over Canada, Dome Depot. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> then do it. I don't want to see. No, I don't want to see no bugs coming and going. I don't want to see no fly. I don't want to see no birds flying in and out of Canada. I don't want to see that. Shut the shit down. Shut Canada down. If I see anything or anyone coming and going. 
and you were supposed to be in charge of that little area, that little spot, and you let something slip by you, you let somebody slip by you, even though you're supposed to be on guard, on watch 24 7. You doing time, that's treason. You doing, you doing time for treason, and you might get the death penalty. Someone who travels to countries that have loose laws around their age of consent oh, in order no. to be able to abuse children without any repercussions. With Mr. Swirl clearly doing the same thing. I gotta, I gotta run that back. I gotta run that back. That's crazy. Loose laws. Over, and that he was likely a sex tourist. Someone who travels to countries that have loose laws around their age of consent. Country, so there's countries out here that has loose laws involving the age of consent. That is so disturbing. Loose law. What countries is that? What countries are those? Don't let it be America. Because we don't play that shit. Hold on now. In order to be able to abuse children without any repercussions, Are you with Mr. Swirl clearly doing the same thing, visiting multiple countries in Asia, making his material, coming home, and then sharing it with his friends. It certainly didn't solve the case, but it was finally a step in the right direction. And unbeknownst to the team working on Operation Vico, they were quickly approaching- Hold on, I just realized something. He, he went to Canada. So, Canada got loose laws involving age restrictions and, 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 and kids and stuff. I feel like that should be globally, like, protect these kids at all costs. Make these laws strong as shit with some serious repercussions. Loose death man, come get man. And bigger revelation. As authorities were working hard on pinning down Mr. Swirl's location, some members of the team held on hope that the images themselves could still be unscrambled. And upon digging a bit deeper, one member of the team would actually recognize the Swirl as having come from a fairly standard editing program, which revealed something. The Swirl effect wasn't like a typical sensor or blur. Those effects completely mask or even remove the pixels from the actual photograph, making them nearly impossible to decipher. But this effect, did neither of those things, and instead it simply rearranged the pixels of the man's face into a swirling pattern, meaning that this image still contained all of its original pixels, and Mr. Swirl's face was somewhere in this picture. No they shit. They just had to piece it together. No shit. And so, in what must have felt like a Hail Mary at the time, an investigator put one of the images into that very same editing software, then clicked that very same swirl effect, and simply reversed it. Hold on! Let me put my sock on. <laughs> I'm happy now. I'm happy now. Y'all just not thinking about y'all just not doing that. Hold on now. Come on with it. Come on with it, homie. We out here. My throat hurts. Come on now, let's we out. Let's go. I got a problem now. Why did it take me this long to do that? Hell no. Which in turn led to this. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Fuck. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Ha, 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 ha. Have I seen this person before? Hold on. Oh shit. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, okay. Hold on now. Hold on now. Shit. Oh shit. In an investigation that started all the way back in 2004, Finally, Mr. Swirl's face was revealed with a single click a whole of three years later. Three. Confirming not only what the man- Three years? Three years? It took him three years to do that? That's insane. Somebody wasn't working hard enough. 
looked like, but also that he was truly just one man behind the swirl. And now, all they had to do was find him. Interpol first started their search by sending this man's image to every single police station the network had access to, asking if anyone across the world had a criminal in their database who might match this photo, but this attempt would fall flat, indicating that whoever this man was, he likely had no prior criminal record. Time was clearly of the essence, and they knew that with every waking moment, Mr. Swirl could be adding to his list of growing victims. And wanting to act fast, Interpol made a fairly unprecedented decision. They reached out to every single major news outlet across the world and asked them to show this man's face on their broadcast to help bring this predator to justice. Additionally, the images of Mr. Swirl's face were also plastered in all corners of the internet. And within just one day, the story was quite literally everywhere. What started as a small search for an anonymous man had become an international manhunt overnight. And within just hours, Mr. Swirl would be anonymous no more. This is Top nice. news story this hour, the worldwide search for a suspected pedophile is concentrated in Thailand this morning. We now know the suspect is a Canadian. The CBC's Michael McCullough reports from Bangkok. This morning, Interpol announced they now believe they know who the man is. He's been identified as a Canadian. 32-year-old Christopher Paul Neal. His name is Christopher Paul Neal. Not only did Neal's face and body match perfectly with Mr. Swirl, but he also had grown up just outside of Vancouver where the IP was tracked to. And he had moved from country to country across Asia in recent years, countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, and Thailand. The resemblance was so undeniable that even one of his own family members came forward to help identify him. Christopher Neal was in fact Mr. Swirl, a discovery that came with some disturbing revelations. As it turns out, Christopher Neal was actually working as a children's English teacher, a job he had held in each of the countries he was discovered to have abused young boys in, making it likely that he used this position of power to lure in children from his classes to eventually abuse them and share their photos online. Along with this, it was also revealed that he had used his relationships with young boys to help lure in other children for him to assault. As looking back on the story that started this video, he had recruited a clueless child he knew to lure those two brothers back to his apartment. This discovery also shined a spotlight on his social media pages, and specifically his MySpace page, where he chillingly wrote, Loving Asia, will I ever come back? While in the midst of his abuse spree, but for me, one of the most shocking revelations was that those images that he had posted during the investigation weren't actually posted to his computer. At some point in the early 2000s, Neil had stopped home for a brief vacation to visit his family, and while there, he decided to upload all of his CP to his internet friends. But rather than using his personal device or a public computer, he instead broke into his own brother's laptop and uploaded his content there. That way, the images would be tracked to his brother and not him, which explained why he never bothered to hide his IP address. The more they learned, the more disturbed the story became, as even at the time they discovered his identity, it was revealed that he had currently been working in South Korea as a teacher. But when the officers arrived to arrest the man, he was already long gone. Having certainly seen his face all over the news, Christopher made the decision to flee the country, being spotted in this image captured at an airport in Thailand, ah, as he had flown to the country, likely in an attempt to find refuge. Throughout the following days and weeks, his likeness would turn up time and time again in the country, indicating that he was somewhere in Thailand hiding out, and having cornered him in the region, it wouldn't take long for police to knock on the door of an abandoned house in the middle of nowhere in which Christopher Neal happened to be hiding, bringing the multi-year search for Mr. Swirl to an end. That's crazy. Following his arrest by Thai police, Neal will be charged- We well, you know what you look like, what the hell? for his assault on those three young boys from the internet cafe, as it was the only crime they could prove had taken place in their country, and with it, carried a prison sentence of five years. It Get the hell. No, no, no. That does make sense. You know, you think about it. He's in a place where, you know, doing things to children 
is not that serious. You know? So I would imagine, okay, it makes sense for him to only do like five years. Lee, the sentencing was light, but the plan was to have Neil turned over to Canadian authorities after he did his time in Thailand, where they would also prosecute him all over again with the hope being that they could do the same thing with countries like Cambodia and Vietnam and essentially force him to live out his life in prison. However, when the sentence was completed in 2012 and Christopher was deported back to Canada, the shocking decision was made to allow Christopher Neal to walk free. I gotta put my sock back on for this one. Can I just end it here? Hmm? Can I, we got like four minutes left. Can I just, can I just end it here, please? Please, please, please. I don't like. You're like, no, 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 no. The fact, the fact that he was a teacher. When Neil was detained in Canada, authorities let him walk under the condition that he would never own a device that connected to the internet again, as well as the agreement that he would stay away from parks, schools, and also register as a sex offender. I can't for the life of me understand why this Does that, or right, so when somebody's registered as a, I wonder, um, does that stay with you for the rest of your life? I hope it does. She was made. But from what I could gather, it seemed to center around the fact that his crimes were international and that none of his other victims had actually come forward, meaning the other countries they had hoped would prosecute never actually bothered to pursue it. And because his crimes didn't happen on Canadian soil, not much could really be done, legally speaking. And so in the end, the hunt for Mr. Swirl ended up lasting almost as long as the sentence he served. And even after everything this man did, he was let loose and allowed to assimilate back into society. That's, 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 that's. I'm but this pissed. isn't where our story ends. Not I'm... even a full year later in 2013, it would be uncovered that Christopher Neal had somehow managed to purchase a computer and also connected to the internet, a clear violation of his conditions. And though he claimed it was just for writing a book about his life experience. My ass, I don't, hey, hey bro, hey mo. Hey, 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 real talk, Mo. Like, hey, hey, I'm about to pop one of these veins right here on the side of my neck because I'm about to, I'm pissed. I'm pissed right now. I'm pissed. I want to turn this off and just, and just like, I don't know. I need some sage. I need to light some candles. I need to talk to God real quick. Like, ha! <laughs> When investigators seized the device, they would, unsurprisingly, find even more CP. 25 images, to be exact, Jesus. including two with his signature swirling face. As it turns out, Christopher had been using the device to contact his fellow female friends, where he would even message one of his disturbed friends right after his release, saying, The swirl liveth still. Proving without a shadow of a doubt that he was remorseless about his crimes and took pride in his new nickname. And somehow, the discovery got even worse from there, as it was revealed that a friend of his had shown him how to access the deep web and how to share these photographs in practically an untraceable way, thus allowing him to continue being active in these predatory groups, no matter what restrictions were placed on him. After Canadian police made this discovery, Christopher would yet again be arrested, and this time they had the chance to really send a message and put him away forever, as clearly letting him walk away the first time was a mistake, as he wasn't reformed even in the slightest. And so, to make up for this, the judge would give Christopher Neal the whopping sentence of just five and a half years, with time served, meaning that he would only end up in jail for a little over 14 months. The prosecution praised the sentence as a win, and Christopher vowed to change his ways, but it just doesn't sit right that as of 2016, Mr. Swirl, the man responsible for dozens and dozens of instances of extreme child abuse, which by the way are just the ones that we know of, is a free man, now living a normal life in Vancouver. 
And worst of all, he now has access to share this material through untraceable avenues, meaning that there is a good chance that he could still be out there obtaining, sharing, and who knows, maybe even producing his content. The case of Mr. Swirl is such a frustrating one. For once, a case of this nature gained worldwide attention and was pursued by the full extent of the law, with the folks over at Interpol doing a fantastic job with the case, only for it all to be deflated once he was finally captured. And just knowing that he's out there living a normal life after all this, after all the lives that he's forever affected, makes this one of the most disheartening cases we've covered to date. I don't even know what the fuck to say. I don't, I don't know what the fuck to say. He, he's still out here living his best life. And if he ha if he has a job, he either works. All joking, all jokes aside, he probably works at McDonald's or Walmart. I'm gonna keep it in the buck with you. I'm. He's still out here living. That's the thing. He's still out here living. I highly doubt he's in America right now. I highly doubt he's in the States right now. Because we don't play that shit over here. Definitely not in Georgia. And I promise you, y'all, I promise you, you're going to hear about me in the news. If I see him, it's on site. I remember, I know what his face is like. I don't need to see his face ever again. I know what he looks like. If I see him, it's on site. And I'm getting my my two million dollars that that it should be a bounty on his head or something. I'm getting my monies after I get him. If he ever comes, man. I might have to just look this up, but I think Georgia is like top five, or like top ten. States in the in the United States that has the um the most uh how you say it? like the the most um I don't, I'm trying to find a word for it when it comes to traffic. Y'all know what I mean. I think Georgia is like the, is in the top states, the top five, top ten states when it deals with traffic. And the fact that I'm living in the same state is that's already crazy enough. But I, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I feel gross. <laughs> I feel nasty. I feel ill. I'm about to throw up. Keep cool. Keep classing. I love you. Stay happy. My family.